If you've been scrolling through social media lately, you've probably come across this trending audio in either a TikTok video or an Instagram reel. And you don't seem to This contagious and angelic sound comes from a highly rated classic anime that predicted the way that we interact with the internet today. A lot of people know about Cowboy Bebop or Neon Genesis Evangelion, but not nearly as many people are familiar with the compelling tale of Serial Experiments Lane. Audio that you just heard is the opening song for Serial Experiments Lane. It's already contagious enough and compels viewers, but it doesn't just end there because as you dive further into this story, it really just grabs a hold of you. It's a whirlwind of a story for sure. Lane, one of the most interesting, most highly stylized uh, anime series we have yet been able to bring you. We have been in search of this series for two years. We have been trying and trying and trying to convince the distributor to let us have a crack at it. Serial Experiments Lane is a 13 episode series that first aired in Japan in July 1998. And for an anime that was made in the 90s, it hits way too close to home in this internet age. Things like iPhones were more than likely a distant daydream or concept. It's clear to say that many of the predictions made in this series may be more relevant today than they ever have been. The psychological mystery series follows Lane, a soft-spoken 14-year-old girl, as she navigates through the corners of the internet, also known alternatively as the Wild. The series opens with Lane's former classmate, Chisa Yamoda, deciding to call it quits with life and jump off of the rooftop. I don't know what it is with anime series and jumping off rooftops, but that is a very common thing amongst a lot of series within the anime industry. Maybe it has something to do with the animators finding interest in drawing a human body as it's drifting off of a building, slow motion, splat. Something that I've noticed, we all know the culture of Japan as well. Very high rate when it comes to a lot of people deciding to call it quits. Later Lane is one of the many girls from her school to receive a disturbing email from that same classmate Chisa after her death. The email claims that Chisa has ascended to a new form in The Wire. Upon receiving this email, Lane starts to develop a rapid interest in the capabilities of The Wire. One reason that Serial Experiments Lane is considered to be so ahead of its time is heavily due to the time of which it was created. Before we start jumping into more details about this lovely series. I just want to say that if you think I'm going to talk about theories because there are so many theories floating around, I won't be doing that. Instead, I'll be focusing more on behind the scenes elements from some of the creators as well as what the series was really trying to um, explain. There won't be any spoilers in this. Lane lives in a world where going online has long been established and a go-to resource for many. In this world, technology specifically, the computer creates and destructs reality. It's obvious from some of the background scenes and daily life routine scenes that technology has become a part of many people's daily lives as it has in our own world. It's a means of comfort, convenience, and this is all portrayed in a late 90s anime series. However, in the real world at the time that this anime came out, so 1998, the internet was only seven years old. It was still considered to be very new and untrustworthy. The show was made in the midst of the dot-com boom in the late 90s, so the internet was certainly growing, but the use of it was nowhere near spread as it is today. At the time, the internet was a nesting space for conspiracy theories that came from the uncertainties of the incoming new millennia and we should know about this and how Y2K was 
really predicted to come when the 2000s hit. If you want to hear a little bit more about that and also how this had a huge influence on Y2K fashion and aesthetic today, go check out this video because it'll dive into it a little bit deeper if you're interested. In fact, in 1998, only 9% of households had access to internet. A shocking statistic when compared to the 90% of households that had access to internet in 2017. With such limited access in households, only 41% of adults went online in 1998. And this would have had to been done either at work, a library, or an internet cafe. I may have like a slight obsession with internet cafes. I find them to be such a vibe they really do not exist today whatsoever. They, of course, stem from just regular coffee shops, but even coffee shops have changed so much, starting to have much more of a clean, distinct look than compared to like 90s Friends coffee shop set where you had a couch and it was definitely more inviting and more of a hangout spot. Coffee shops today are more of a workplace spot. But if you guys are interested in a video on internet cafes, I'm really interested in doing a video on internet cafes. Let me know in the comments because I think that might be really fun. Serial Experiments Lane is the brainchild of producer Yasuyuki Yuda. He was previously a producer at Pioneer LDC. He led the planning, organization, coordination, and management around multimedia projects such as anime, video games, and manga. Originally, Serial Experiments Lane was constructed as a video game. Yuda began recruiting various members who will later go on to form Serial Experiments Lane development team. One of those recruits was... One of those recruits was Chiaki J. Konaka, the head writer of Serial Experiments Lane. You may recognize his other work, Digimon Tamers and Helsing. At the time, he primarily had experience as a horror writer. He was heavily influenced by classic horror films like The Exorcist, Hell House, and House of Dark Shadows. Visually, Serial Experiments Lane lends a similar eerie lens of the internet and the consequences that come along with it. To the viewers, the internet is seen as an eerie entity with untapped powers that can bleed into reality. Reality. Boundaries between reality and cyberspace rapidly blur as, Lund as Lane plunges deeper into the wire. It's safe to say that Konica predicted many technological foundations that we have in place today. And just a slight reminder, this came out in 1998. Wow. Konica clearly did his research when putting this story together in the late 90s. He more than likely referenced many essays or predictions of the internet that were available at the time. Gossip on the wire often becomes part of casual conversation. This is reflective of how people utilize digital communication today with all the forms of social media such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat. Monica <laughs> was quoted as saying, the first four episodes, I pretty much wrote them all myself. I couldn't even see the end of the story. I was writing like crazy. After that, there was a pause in the project and when Nakamura came on board, it was like we found our compass and we started to clearly see the direction we needed to go. In that sense, the fifth episode was the first time I tried to show what I was really wanting to express with Serial Experiments Lane, while the sixth episode is mere sci-fi entertainment instead. Then, while I was trying to give a conclusion to this story, we made the eighth episode in which I put into practice what the producer and I wanted to do from the beginning. The ninth episode, on the other hand, was a little strange since half of it was made like a documentary. Basically, it's the episode where I tried to explain to the audience that I was making a story based on this kind of view. Finally, the story ends with episodes 10, 11, and 12. In that sense, it's a very neat structure but it wasn't at all what I had in mind from the beginning. When I think back on it now, I can say that while I was writing the script for each episode, I was fumbling and the last part when I had to end the story was really difficult. You won't believe this, but I hadn't written any plot. So before each episode, Mr. Nakamura and the others would ask, what's going to happen next? They were very anxious as if they were reading a serial novel. Konica quoted H.P. Lovecraft and Lewis Carroll as inspirations due to their detailed world building and layered world history present in their work. Although he swears by this quote that Lane did not need the elements of H.P. Lovecraft, that's because he wrote Lane as the story of present day, present time. Present day. <laughs> present time. <laughs> Oh. <sighs>
Is that eerie enough for you? Like I mentioned earlier, this series is definitely more relevant today than it ever has been as our relationship with technology continues to get closer. The idea sends shivers up my spine. In the first episode, Lane's father says, you're in junior high now. Your friends are leaving you in the dust, right? Referring to Lane's unfamiliarity with the wire. The irony of this statement is that we are now living in a world where pretty much kindergartners are playing on tablets and computers instead of playing outside and on monkey bars. They rather find enjoyment in technology and they're growing up with technology rapidly at their side 24 seven. I mean, I grew up with the internet as well. We see Lane connect with her father whose relationship prior was very distant. Simultaneously, we see her relationship with the internet grow as well in a very unhealthy manner. Prior to accessing the wire, Lane was shown to be reclusive and not at all knowledgeable about what was going on online. As the series continues, Lane becomes more adept at using the Wired and is shown to be bolder and more social in reality. And this kind of dives into how the internet can really influence the human being itself. If someone is starting to attain more power and influence on the internet, does that translate to the person who they are in real life? Does this also make them more confident? to walk into large crowds still present that brand or in real life is it completely different from them because who they are on the internet may just be an exaggerated form of themselves. Hmm. The way this series tackles philosophical ideas about existentialism and identity is spellbinding. The show analyzes how a person's online presence and awareness of internet news becomes a large factor in their social standing in the modern world. Sound familiar? The Wired is visualized as a world filled with a black space and half-formed static human bodies or human body parts. This depiction of online personality symbolizes that only a portion of a person can be seen online and a person cannot truly be known through digital communication. Oh, the good old parasocial relationship. You're probably thinking uh, a pair of what a parasocial relationships Parasocial relationships are common amongst online users. It is a one-sided relationship where one person extends emotional energy, interest, and time, and the other party does not know that person personally. The most common type of parasocial relationship are with beloved celebrities, favorite athletes, or even a media figure. You form parasocial relationships because you feel connected or attached to someone, and you may look up to the person or idealize them in some way, says Sally Theron, PhD associate in the psychology department of Wesley College. As the series continues, we begin to see Lane develop a somewhat of a parasocial relationship with her own online presence. The digital Lane and the real Lane begin to drift and Lane's online character grows into a separate identity. The Lane online becomes somewhat of a bully. I mean, after being denied in real life consistently, she finds solace in connecting with others on the wire, not always having the best intention. Another common trope of having a personal brand is how the brand identity may be totally different from the actual person. In the film Perfect Blue, we see the same struggle as the protagonist Mima begins to disconnect from her original wholesome image. The video game for Serial Experiments Lane was released for the PlayStation in November 26, 1998, two months after the last episode of the anime. The game acts as a network simulator in which the player would navigate to explore Lane's story. The creators of the game did not even call it a game, but instead called it a psycho stretch where. The goal of the game is to let the player get the feeling that they are pieces of information that they have to sort through and that they would have to do this with less than what exists to understand. As with the anime, the creative team's main goal was to let the player feel Lane and to understand her problems and to love her. Mm. At the beginning of the game, the player can select files by moving Lane around the select menu. The select menu called Site, there are two sites, A and B, has 
22 levels that can be accessed by moving lane up and down with each floor having one to nine parts accessible by moving to the right or to the left. As you continue through the game, unlocking pieces of information, not necessarily in chronological order, the player gets the opportunity to walk a mile in lane shoes. Delving through random information as Lane did while delving deeper in the depths of the wire. This collection of information allows Lane to have a closer perspective of friends online and her friends in real life, finally allowing her to connect with people, but of course this comes with a cost. As Lane's online presence continues to grow, so do rumors and gossip that precede her reputation. Serial Experiments Lane depicts how social media heavily influences relationships with others, reputation, and perception. Having the freedom to access the internet is great and all, but, but we often forget the consequences that come with posting content that others can see. The things that we say online can be perceived and interpreted in more ways than one. The consequences of what is said on the internet are not confined to just the internet. What brings us back to the cute TikToks and Instagram influencers that use this audio, do they know what they're posting? As we scroll through and watch these individuals douse their eyelids in lavender powder or display a variety of fit checks, do they know how this piece of content will come to affect how others see them? And should they even care? And when it comes back to connecting this piece of audio to their content, are they aware of even the story behind this piece of audio? The story behind how this, this intro song gave viewers a perspective into the evils, the good, and the harmful of the internet. I don't know, but probably in 30 or 40 years from now, instead of relating more to Serial Experiments Lane, we'll probably be able to relate more to Cyberpunk Edge Runners. The only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a huge old thumbs up. And thank you so much because I just made it to over 100 subscribers and whoa, I hope that we would get here. I did not know how long it would take to get here prior to me starting a YouTube when I was in this kind of funk about, nah, well, I'm never gonna start a YouTube. That's probably never gonna be a thing for me. I never then thought that I would have over a hundred subscribers. I'm, I'm really happy to have you here. I'm glad that you enjoy the videos. If you have any ideas for videos, let me know, but yeah, thanks. And I hope you enjoyed this video.